This is Second Lieutenant Graham. We're swimming too deep here. This place is howling of our rotten boys. Can you still hear me, Tom? Well, shit. I guess I'm speaking to ghosts. Mother of Jesus, what the hell? Alright you guys, it's been a little while. As you may or may not know, there's been a lot of bugs in the scripting lately, and in a recent patch, 3 for 3 has fixed many of them, which makes forging a lot less frustrating. Seriously, I've made a lot of progress and wound up losing all of it just due to corrupted save files. But with Season 4 coming out and Infection with it, I wanted to show you how to make a flashlight. That, that's flash, flash light. Don't get it twisted. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is grab a script brain and then also grab light objects, as many as you need for the project you're working on. For this example, I'm just going to be using four. Now head into the script brain and we'll be starting off by grabbing an event node every n seconds under custom events. Then you're also going to want to grab a for each player node as well as a get all players on team node, or just a get all players node depending on what you're doing. Then you'll also want to grab a number variable. From there, you can go into the settings for the number variable and set it to zero, and hook that up to the seconds part of the every n seconds. Then set the initial delay time to zero as well. And what that is for is so that the flashlight can smoothly follow the player. Once that's done, you're going to want to hook up the diamond from the every n seconds to the for each player. Then you're going to want to hook up the get all players on team to the object section. And if you chose to go with the get all players on team as opposed to get all players, you're going to want to make sure to set the team to whichever team you want to have the flashlights for. Now get the object references of the flashlights you spawned, and put them all in an object list. Once you've done that, grab a get objects at index node, and hook up the object list to your object list, and hook up the index to the current iteration under the for each player node. And don't worry about that garbage up top, we'll worry about that later. Now it's later. Next, spawn in a get player weapons, get player aiming vector, and get object rotation nodes. Hook the equipped weapon up to the get object rotation, and hook up the get player aiming vector to the current player. And then hook up the get player weapons to the current player as well. From there, add the aiming vector and the rotation in an add vectors node. Hook that up to a get vector access value. Get two addition nodes and one subtraction node. Then you're also going to want to grab three number variables. Align them like so, and hook them up like so. Now as far as what numbers you're going to be putting into the variables, from what I originally used when making this script, compared to what I had to do for the example wound up being different, so we'll cover that later. Then grab a vector3 variable, and make sure you pay attention to the get vector access value, and make sure you're corresponding the two together, so that x winds up lining up with x, y with y, and z with z. Otherwise, God help you. And now you can get yourself a set object rotation variable, and hook up the vector 3 to the rotation, set is relative to false, and hook up the object to the get object at index node. That should be it for the rotation, now let's move on to the position. First you're going to want to grab a get object position and get object forward node. Hook the get object position to the equipped weapon. Then hook up the get object forward to the current player. Once again, you want to add the two vectors, and then just grab yourself a set object position node, and hook up the object to the get object at index, then attach the position to the result of the added variables. Once again, you're going to want to set the is relative to false, and you can take and hook up the set object position to the set object rotation. And for this final part of the scripting process, we're going to have to set up a condition. For this example, I'm going to be grabbing a get is zoomed node. But, if you want the flashlight to be enabled at all times, you can also just grab a get is player node. Anyways, hook the get is zoomed up to the current player, then grab a branch node and hook the other side of the is zoomed to the condition under the branch node. Then hook the diamond of the branch node up to the for each player execute per player node. 
After that, hook up the if true to the get object rotation node. And now we want to establish what to do if it is false. Grab another set object position node and hook it up to the if false section. Then hook the object up to the index. And for the position, you're going to want to get the position of the light objects you spawned at the start of this video. Now back to the numbers from earlier. You can try setting them up like I have them here, but if that doesn't work, you're going to want to mess around with the degrees. In my case, I was having issues with the Z variable. It should be something along the lines of 0, 180, 270, or 90 degrees, either negative or positive. Now that the script is all set up, we want to go into the object properties of the lights themselves. You'll want to set it to Spotlight. You'll also want to raise the brightness up considerably. Then you can change the aesthetics of everything else to match whatever you want for your map in particular. It's more so a personal thing. Anyways, that'll do it for this tutorial. If you found it useful, leave a like, and stick around for more content. Now get out of my face.